All right. So the last thing is uh, modernizing your security operations. And this honestly is the hard part. Up until now, we've been talking about implementing technology and implementing a, a little bit of process to protect you and get to a point where you're able to detect things and, um, you know, maybe even take some action. But for the most part, steps one through three were about putting in place the protection. Okay, but now we got to talk about the day-to-day -day operation. And this is where a lot of companies have taken their IT resources and modernized their job function to give them some element of security in their job. So let's start with number four is streamlining your response to common attacks with Defender for Endpoint, Defender for Email, Defender for Identity, and Defender for Cloud. All together, just known as Microsoft 365 Defender. So if you have this product and you've deployed it, now you start getting all the alerts and all the incidents sent to your administrator screen. So what do you do with those? That's what this means. Step four is streamlining your response, having a team that can review the alerts, see if they're meaningful, assign them to people to investigate, and then remediate if there's a problem, fix it. So being able to streamline your response to those types of activities is important. If you just deploy Defender for Endpoint and nobody's watching for the alerts to come in, then it's a waste of time. So somebody has to watch the console. You have to get the alerts and read them, make sense of them, and do something about them. Um, then step five, unify visibility. Chances are, if you're in a bigger organization, there's different people in the security team working on different areas. You might have the network security person, the app security person, the endpoint security person, and the identity or the user account security person. Well, you can unify the visibility with a SIM tool, S-I-E-M, SIM. <laughs> so basically, think of it as one, one console to rule them all. <laughs> so uh, a SIM tool basically, is, it takes all the inputs from other systems and presents it in one view. And then you can query the data or um, hunt for threats in that data. So when you use Defender and you have alerts across users, endpoints, apps, and network, all that data is coming back into the Microsoft Security Dashboard. But, like I said, in a big organization, you may get other security folks who have their own tools. Maybe there's a network sensor. Maybe there's a, an encryption sensor. I don't know. But basically, all these different tools can report to a centralized SIM tool. And Microsoft has one called Sentinel. And most companies use a tool called Splunk. But that's really uh, uh, the next step of modernization is instead of having a bunch of different people with their own consoles managing their own security events separately, you can roll them all into a single operation center and unify your visibility into the activities of your organization. All right. And then the last step of modernizing your security is reducing your manual effort. So we talked about alerts and incidences, incidents, <laughs> Always somebody has to review that and investigate it and then remediate it. 
So there's this acronym SOAR. And SOAR stands for Security Orchestration Automation and Response. And this is basically where you're letting the computer do some of the hard work of, well, what happened here and what can I do to fix it? And um, Defender for Endpoint Plan 2, for example, has some of that automated response where if it detects that something has happened, it can automatically go and investigate it and remediate it. And then it'll just tell you, hey, I did this. Uh, a, a real simple example of that is a spam filter. Hey, I detected spam and I moved it to your junk box. That's automated remediation. So similar to that would be Defender for Endpoint. Hey, I detected a, a virus and I moved it to the quarantine. That's automation. Mm -hmm. But there's ways to build more of that automation in. Like, um, and it doesn't have to be black and white either. It can be, hey, I detected someone's trying to log in from a non-trusted area. So I automatically invoked an MFA response requirement. So they had to do an extra step in order to get in. Mm -hmm. There's also uh, enforcing alert quality. And for any of you who ever have worked with monitoring, you know that it's essential that you tune your alerts. Otherwise, it becomes the, the boy that cried wolf where your system keeps sending you alerts saying this happened, and because you see it every day, you start to ignore it. Rather than tuning the rule and telling it, don't send me an alert unless it's critical. So enforcing alert quality will reduce your manual effort of going in and continually addressing alerts that are meaningless or that should have different responses. And then finally, threat hunting is kind of the ultimate where you're you're in in charge. Think of it like um, you've got a castle surrounding your critical data and, and applications and users, and there's somebody up on the top of that wall on the tower with a telescope looking out, and they're looking for advancing threats to come to your castle. So you can address them before they become a problem. Now, getting back to computer speak, threat hunting is looking at all the activity that's being reported back to you and looking for the needle in the haystack, looking for patterns of misuse or uh, identifiers of breach. That's what threat hunters do is they look for the problems before they become problems. And in many cases, you can stop an attack that's in its infancy before it can become widespread and disastrous. And so that's when you get to uh, kind of a modern security operation is the ability to do these things because you've already put in place your foundations for zero trust and you've aligned your IT security, your data compliance to the business and its mission. So now you guys can just sit back and you know, have streamlined responses, unify your visibility, and reduce your manual effort. Couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> <laughs> so that's it for the, the top priorities. Then they say as needed. Mm -hmm. You can start looking at your infrastructure. And an area that we're very familiar with is Azure infrastructure or modernizing your on-prem infrastructure into Azure. And there's some key things that we like to do on the first two areas here. Once you bring your infrastructure into Azure, you still have the same needs to rigorously monitor and remediate security configurations, permissions, 
updates and more. So just because you've moved your workload into an Azure virtual machine doesn't mean you can stop patching. You still need to patch the Windows OS and the SQL database engine if you're using that. You still need to monitor your VM. You still need to apply antivirus and security configurations to it. And you still need to control administrative access to that server. So there are there are tools to do all of those things built into Azure. And then finally, as part of that modernization into Azure, you might still have legacy risk. You may still have old servers, old operating systems, old protocols that are in play, and those should be isolated. And if you can't isolate those, then you should retire them by modernizing to new solutions as much as you can.